Good morning all. Um, I was just laying out my Muppet 2 project because I want to move on to the next uh, level uh, to take it beyond the simple buck converter uh, that I got to so far. Now you can probably see what's happening in the next sort of incarnation of this project. Um, I have another MOSFET here as well as one there. I need to uh, power up this watt meter here um, but I've chopped the wires now because uh, this battery box was just becoming more and more infuriating <laughs> and you can see that I uh, just ripped this section out and broke the spring and uh, that's because this battery box just became more and more annoying um, even these God P batteries or goop however you want to uh, look at them just don't fit in this very tight compartment and you push that all the way in and you've got a devil of a job to pull that back out and it just got so annoying I broke it but it was when I was charging um, these God P batteries and also my Vapex instance which are very nice quality 9 volt batteries uh, in this PowerX MHC490F Stealth 9 volt battery charger what's this put out uh, DC 9 volts 70 to 90 milliamps times four channels um, these goop batteries were taking only about 10 minutes to fully charge in this charger whereas these proper batteries were taking well in excess of an hour um, so this is what about 100 milliamps and these say 200 milliamp hours so yeah these would probably take getting on for two hours these were taking about 10 minutes so I'm very suspicious of what's in these batteries um, they're also extremely light let's uh, weigh them so using some nice low-tech weighing apparatus um, this mechanical poster scale postal scale made in Japan actually um, you can see that this Vapex instant weighs um, approximately 50 grams there and um, the God P battery weighs 27 grams so about half the weight that's suspicious um, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to disconnect some of these connections because I need to move some of this stuff out of the way in fact I'm gonna move all of this stuff out of the way so that I can uh, investigate this battery uh, right so being just half the weight of a real nickel metal hydride 9 volt battery this one says 280 milliamp hours which is absolutely not the case um, I think what I'll do is I'll just take this sticker off first because I don't really know how to get inside this battery and if I take the sticker off there might be some clues in the black plastic casing let's take a look at that right there's already a small gap in there so it looks like the bottom piece is a one piece uh, receptacle and this top is just stuck in there but I've just got to try and work that a bit and try and work out how that comes out I'm hoping to just pull the innards out like that right I think it's going to be more a case of just breaking bits of the case but already I can see um, some cylindrical objects kind of mounted transversely across like that that looks interesting right that's cut it away all round now let's pull it out and see what it involves oh that's interesting I mean volumetrically it's not too bad um, a sort of fit is it that seventh cell at the bottom that's interesting isn't it what are seven 1.2s uh, seven one point twos are seven plus seven point twos, which is one point four. So it's eight point four volts. Now, normally these things, I think, are um, let's have a look at this Digimax one. Six um, vertically mounted um, quadruple A cells, or something like that. Not um, these little cells, which these are the kind of things you'd expect to see in a garden solar light, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I'm very surprised that um, they filled most of the box with some sort of cell. So it must be just that these cells uh, are very poor quality, very low capacity, something like that. 
Uh, let's put all this broken plastic inside the little case here, keep things uh, neat on my bench. So what would account for the massive difference in weight um, if most of the volume is actually occupied by cells? Well, then I guess it's the weight of the cells themselves, and that must come down to really the amount of metal, I suppose, um, this being twice the weight of this. There must be twice the actual metal in here. Maybe it's the nickel in nickel metal hydride. I don't know. Um, now, they, these cells aren't giving much away. But I was just wondering if I peeled this purple coating off one of these cells, this bottom one looks like a good candidate, whether there's anything actually stamped on the cell itself. Uh, so let's peel that off and just see whether there's anything printed on here which would give um, a hint as to what the capacity of these cells is. Is that going to come away? Yeah. Um, no, I can't see anything written on there. And uh, no, there's nothing printed or stamped on that cell that would give any indication as to what its um, capacity is. But uh, just from my own experiments, because I was just lighting up um, a bulb. Where's the bulb I was lighting at? Actually, it was this one. I was just putting this on here. I don't suppose that'll light. Oh, yeah, it's recovered a bit. Um, it just didn't last for very long at all. Now, I've been sitting here staring at this um, Vapex Instant, which has been a very good battery, thinking it doesn't make much sense just taking this apart and not making a comparison with this. I really don't want to do this because these batteries are very good. But I'm thinking I probably am going to have to take this apart for the sake of comparison. And maybe it's time I got some new 9 volt batteries anyway. Ah, oh, let's do it. So under the um, uh, sticker, it's a similar sort of thing, just a plastic box. Uh, so I've just got to go around the top and try and pull out whatever's in there. Well, that was a bit more destructive than I was hoping it would be. But when you see the difference, you can immediately see why this is so much better. I mean, look at the volumetric usage they have used every square no cubic millimeter um filled with these mm, what do you call them prismatic certainly cuboid um nickel metal hydride cells one two three four five six seven so it's 8.4 volts again i mean there's the difference these cylindrical cells just don't make best use of the um the volumetric space in there these ones make total and complete usage and um, typically the vendors of these uh, cells the quality ones will give realistic milliamp hour figures this one said 200 milliamp hours um, I think I've got some energizers coming actually I think they're energizers and they say 175 so those are probably realistic figures 280 for this and again it's this weight difference I'm just thinking that um, these cells are just going to be better quality quite apart from the actual sort of volume di uh, dimensions of the cells. Um, but yeah, that's what's inside those two 9 volt batteries. Oh, go on then, in for a penny, in for a pound. I might as well destroy one of these Digimax ones as well. I'll just end up with one of each battery left to experiment with. But I have bought some um, Energizer ones, as I say, so... They should be genuine. And I think actually from now on I might buy my rechargeable nickel metal hydrides from Tesco or the supermarket. Probably get uh, a more reliable battery. Okay, so to real reveal what's in this Digimax, there it is. It's got these sort of cuboid slab type, hmm, you might even call them prismatic I suppose, um, nickel metal hydride cells similar to the Vapex, but... Look at the size difference. This one has got sort of um, foam padding to pad out the space, whereas these cells, and the Digimax was never as good as the Vapex. The Vapex was the best one, and you can see why, because the cells are just that much bigger. So um, a similar sort of flat cell type, but just not such a large volume on the Digimax. The Vapex is better. So where do I go next for my 9 volt um, batteries? 
do I go for the lithiums? Um, now some of them are USB rechargeable, that means I don't need to get a proprietary recharger. Some of them don't seem to be uh, USB rechargeable, so you'd probably need a special purpose charger because I doubt the electronics inside are going to be able to take the uh, nickel metal hydride delta V type charge. Um, loads and loads of these nickel metal hydrides with ridiculous claims for capacity like this one, nickel metal hydride, um, 900 milliamp hours. I don't think so. But equally, we've got lithium ion um, at 900 milliamp hours, which is a bit more plausible. So lithium um, with a USB socket, probably the way to go. Or I'll just buy a battery holder and stick uh, six AAs in it. Perhaps I'll go that way. So yeah, those are my nickel metal hydride um, batteries. These are terrible. These weren't quite as good as these. These were the best, but I've kind of broken that now. Might better solder a little wire link onto there. So yeah, where do I go from here? Is it lithium? Problem with lithium is that they tend to have a 3.7 volt cell and then a boost circuit. So the output is going to be noisy. I don't know whether you can get lithium where they've got like say two cells in series, but then you'd have to have battery management and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I'll probably dip my toe into the water of lithium, but I've got real nostalgia for nickel metal hydride. You do get a proper clean, um, very low noise, well no noise, um, standard battery type power supply. And that's my favorite. Cheerio.